Konnichiwa. Uh, so for this particular vlog, I thought I'd do a bit of an update on how to basically organise a wedding. Because there was one comment that me and Dave got quite a lot actually when we were getting married. And that is just how well organised everything was. Just how much fun and brilliant the whole thing really, really was. Everybody was say, just complimenting us the whole time. And we're still getting compliments now about how good it was. So I thought we must be pretty good at it. But there are also some things that I kind of wish I'd known, sort of like timelines, how to do things, and also what things would kind of entail as well. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a heads up in case you're thinking of getting married ever. This is just a little bit of advice that you can come back to. It's just based on our own personal experiences. And we were lucky because actually we had really positive experiences of booking this wedding. Um, the first thing you need to do is work out a date. Um, that is whether it's church wedding, a register office wedding, anything. We had a register office wedding, followed by a reception at a separate venue. You could choose to get married at the same venue as your reception, so a lot of people go for hotels and things like that, golf courses and whatever, where you can do both. Either way, you're going to need a registrar there. So you need to make sure that you get this booked well in advance, just to make sure that you can have the date that you want. Initially, we want, thought we wanted a Saturday, but actually it turned out to be a lot cheaper and better for us to get married on a Friday. Plus, the venues that we wanted were, had plenty of availability, which was really, really useful. It's actually about half the price to get married on a Friday in a lot of places, or certainly a lot cheaper to get married on a Friday than it is on a Saturday. And yet a lot of people can make a Friday wedding because they just have a long weekend to come along to it. So that's a little piece of advice. Don't rule out a Friday even a Monday, but maybe a Friday's better because then people have the whole weekend to recover like they did from us, you know, they drink a little bit or whatever. The next thing you need to do is send out the invites as soon as you've got the date of the venue booked, even before you do anything else, because people need to know well in advance what the date is so that they can book the time off work if they need to, so that they can make sure that they get all the their stuff sorted so that they can come along to your special day. About at that time as well, <laughs> We set our date nine months before we were going to get married, so we had to rush everything quite a lot. So you, if you set the date and get the invites or the hold the dates out quite quickly, you might have a bit more time to do these bits, but we had to do this quite quickly and we thought we'd get it all done at the same time. We actually contacted the car company, the cake maker, the DJ and the photographer about the same time so that we could make sure that we had our deposits down and we had those dates held so that we could get exactly what we wanted for our day. So I don't think you can actually go too early on these things. I, my advice would be, as soon as you know who you want to go with, go for it. If you know you're getting married in a little while, my advice would be go to as many wedding fairs as you possibly can and do things like that. Now, me and Dave didn't do that. We didn't have a lot of time to, but we were lucky that the reception venue that we were um, using actually had a lot of very, very good companies, very experienced companies and whatever, who we could go to. Um, our photographer was actually uh, an old friend of mine. Um, who is a very good photographer um, and she took some amazing photos on the day so I'm really really glad we went with that so don't be afraid to call in favours as well or, or to if you know somebody who is a cake maker who takes photographs things like that because you'll feel more confident with them as well I felt very very comfortable having my friend as our photographer because I knew her so well and so it really really helped having somebody that I knew for a long time that I trusted that I felt comfortable around on the day after you've done all of this, um, if you're wearing a dress, uh, make sure that you get it plenty of time enough that if alterations need to be made because you lose weight or put on weight, um, you can have that done. Um, you can also make sure that you get the dress that you really, really want, but really take your time to look for the right dress. I knew, I found the dress that I wanted online actually, or rather my mum found it for me and then I knew that was the one. But I still went out and looked at other things because you never know, you never know what's out there. So go and have a look and see what you really, really want. And actually, my dress turned out to be perfect for me. It was a 1940s style tea dress. And I never, ever, ever would have thought that that's the sort of dress I'd end up getting married in. But actually, it was perfect for me. It was perfect for my body shape. It was perfect for what I want, that kind of vintage feel that I love. And it wasn't quite traditional. It was ivory rather than white. And it, it just had something about it that was very me in the end. So find what you want. The same sort of thing goes if you're hiring or buying a suit. Make sure that you get it in advance enough that you can have alterations made if you need to because you put on weight, you've lost weight, whatever. Um, it just gives you that time so that you're not panicking last minute because all of a sudden something doesn't fit. 
Uh, buy the rings fairly early as well because they can be resized if you need them to be. Um, that's what we did. We actually uh, got married in the October, but we bought the rings in the June. So we had them for ages and we knew that they were right for us and we had them properly measured. And we went to a sort of independent jewellers as well, which was really, really good because they really had good customer care and they were really knowledgeable about the rings that they sold. That was very, very useful. Um, I forgot to mention that actually when you're booking the venues, just as a note, something that you need to know about. With the registrar, um, if it's a registrar office or if you're getting married in a hotel or something, you will need to meet with the registrar almost as soon as you book the date because what they do is they interview you both together and separately. It's kind of to make sure that it's not some kind of scam marriage kind of thing. I mean, to be honest, it's nothing much to worry about. It is literally just answering questions about yourself and your partner. Uh, both together and separately it's really really simple it's not at all threatening the, the registrars are lovely people they're just really professional and it's just something that they have to do um yeah so a month before the wedding that's when you want to go to the venue and make all your final decisions on food on music that might be played um going through the timings of the day as well that's really important so you know when your photographs going to be taken you know when the wedding breakfast is going to be you know when the evening do is going to start you know when the buffet is going to come out all these little things which actually help to ease your mind a lot because then all of a sudden you can see how the day is going to work out and for me wanting to be in control quite a lot this was very important also meet the photographer just before as well, go around the venue with them, look at areas where you might want to have your photos taken, things like that, that's really important too. The day before, that's the time to get your hair done. I had my hair cut the day before actually, you never notice it now, it grows really really fast, but it was actually done perfectly for me the day before, so I didn't have to worry about it, it was fine, I did my nails the night before. I also worked out, I did my own makeup and I actually worked it all out um, well in advance, I went and bought the good quality makeup and I just made sure that I was happy with what I was doing. I went for a very natural look so that I would show up in photographs quite well. That was pretty much what I was going for. So make sure you know what you want and don't be afraid to try and do it yourself as well because sometimes people have makeup artists and I've had people complain about it because it is too dramatic. It's not what they're after. I think the natural look is coming back in now. A lot of people are more after that. So make sure you know what you want. Don't be afraid to go and try out. Have you know have trials with makeup artists and maybe go to department stores where they have really good advisors on makeup because they might actually be able to give you guidance on how to do your own makeup on the day and what works best for you. And then on the day, just enjoy it. Relax and enjoy it. Don't get worried about anything that might go wrong. Just enjoy it because it is your big day, it is your special day, and it will hopefully only happen once for you and you just need to make sure that you enjoy every second of it and take a step back people said to me beforehand take a step back and make sure that you really really enjoy every moment of it because it will go like that and they were absolutely right and so it's really good to even if it's just in the evening just stand back watch everybody else dancing and chatting and having a good time and realize that this is something very very special so if you're getting married or you know you end up getting married very soon i wish you a lot of luck it's really fantastic it is a great experience it's yeah it's hard work but it is brilliant brilliant fun as well um just a few things to note you um are only given one copy of your marriage certificate but you can order more um whenever you want to um, and that can be years down the line as well if you're going on honeymoon and you're thinking of changing your name you either need to change your passport before you go or my advice would be travel in your maiden name then change your passport when you get back absolutely fine you can do that whenever uh, the advice that was given to me by the registrar was that if you're going to change your legal documents like your passport like your driver's license try and do them roughly the same time because having two different types of documents when they run through checks and databases might get quite confusing uh, so that's really all i have to say this vlog ended up being a little bit longer than i thought but then what price can you put on advice for things like a wedding uh, so i will see you in the next video sayonara